Okay, Kim, do you want me to take it away? Yes. Oh, I think we lost Kim. Uh, don't well, I can go on. ahead and I can go ahead and swear. Um, let's see, Karen, Bill, and Todd, right? Uh, Dawn's not here. Cynthia's here too. Uh, Cindy was sworn in today. Oh, okay. So she's all set. All right. So are you guys all ready? We're ready. Uh, do you? Do you, Karen, Bill, and Todd, solemnly affirm under the pains and penalties of perjury that you will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on you as a member of the Townsend Master Planning Committee to the best of your ability and understanding, agreeably and according to the rules and regulations of the Constitution and the laws of this Commonwealth? I do. Okay, I, I've sent you all paperwork. If you could sign it and get it back to me, that'd be great. Um, can we scan it and can we scan it and email it yeah. to you? Yeah, that's right. fine. Not a problem. All right. Um, it's the open meeting law and the conflict of interest training, uh, which you've all done before, but just so that you have it. All right. So you Kim, guys are uh, all Kim, set to Kim, go. Yep. Kim's back, it looks like. If you did you swear her in too? Yeah, she's been sworn in. All right, cool. Okay, so you guys are all set. Have a good night. Thanks, Kathy. Thank Thanks, you so Kathy. much, Kathy. Yep, not a problem. Anytime. Right. Bye. All right. Um, so I do have a bad internet connection here, as always, but hopefully um, it will cooperate this evening. But certainly, if I drop off, I will get right back on. Um, so next um, on the agenda would be additions or deletions. Um, I do not have um, any other than a, a sort of a point of order that um, Cynthia Donovan Schuster uh, remains, uh, you know, a member of the committee. Um, she is, um, I know, trying to join this evening as well so i'm sure she'll pop on in a bit um if we could, oh she's here wonderful thanks cynthia um so if we could just do the roll call just so i'm sure we or i'll say who i know is there from the committee todd bill yes, karen yes cynthia yep. and as yes we have chaz and laura do we have any other okay Kim, there's somebody else there by phone, too. Yeah. I don't okay. know who that is, though. Um, Hartley or Jerry, could you please uh, let us know who you let in by phone so that Cynthia can um, record their attendance as well? Kim? It's oh. me, Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Okay. Hi, Andrea. <laughs> Wonderful. Hi. Was she sworn in? Yes. Okay, so if we could go to the uh, next part of the agenda um, is reviewing the past minutes. Um, I emailed them over to you. Um, <clears throat> If uh, we just review those, uh, it was Wednesday, November the 10th, 2020, 7.15 p.m. Uh, it was over a Zoom meeting in attendance was Andrea, Bill, Karen, and myself. Absent were Todd, Don, and Cynthia. We brought the meeting to order at 7.20. We reviewed the current status of the plan. We set meetings for the 8th and 21st of December at 7.15. Both will be via Zoom. Each member will review the initial comments of the adequate economic development plan and add other comments as needed. Sections in development were discussed. Karen will work with Todd on the water section. Bill will reach out to Veronica on conservation. Kim will prepare a draft letter to FXM on the requested. I had in my notes meeting, but if someone could help me on that. Um, I think we were requesting edits, not a meeting. Well, that's what I thought, but I had written down meeting. So was it revisions or edits? 
Yes, it was revisions or edits, but it was not. Okay. Ready. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make that correction. Um, and then uh, that Bill will attend the November 16th meeting to give an update. And I will add in meeting of the planning board. And then our motion to adjourn um, was given by Bill and I'm not good at being the recorder, so I'm so thrilled that Cindy is here tonight. Um, so do you, do you have in your notes what time we adjourned and who seconded? I think it was Andrea that seconded the motion. No, I don't. Okay. Um, I'm guessing that we would be able to get the time that we adjourned from Hartley or Jerry from the recording itself. I'm not sure if they can hear us. Okay. Um, if we don't have that information, I guess we'll have to table these until the next meeting and take a look at the recording itself. Um, Eight twenty. Eight twenty. Thank you so much. Oh, jeez. And then, um, Andrea, I had recalled that you seconded that. Is that correct in my memory? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So with those updates, does anyone have any additions or deletions or questions on the minutes? Okay, hearing none, I'll go ahead and um, mark those final and get them to you for your files and to Kathy as well. Okay. Um, so for the next point in the agenda, um, it's the review of all of our comments um, so that we can send this along to FXM. Um, so, Bill, I know that that you um, had gone into the Dropbox. Um, so if you want to just review any of your comments or questions that you have so that we can share them with the group. Okay. So the, um, the first comment I had came at the very beginning. Um, let me just find out exactly where it wrote. Um, they have an introduction um, summary response to the RFP questions. And I did not find that very helpful. What I suggested in my thing is that they give a one to two page executive summary which lists the five to 10 top suggestions specific to Townsend to aid in our economic development. I basically wanted them to boil their document down to two pages and they have the action items, their recommendations right in front and in a single or one or two pages. And I thought that would be the most helpful thing they could do. I mean, I have some guess as to what they might write, but I think they should really be saying here are the top five to 10 things this town should be doing. Okay. Um, 
And then any particular changes um, that you wanted to add or comment on throughout the document? So throughout the document, I wrote little things at the end of each long section where they give a data dump. I yeah. want them to add a summary paragraph saying, in this section, we discuss this and the bottom line is I want them to summarize everything and have a, have a bottom line for, you know, I do not want sections with a whole bunch of information that just end with information. Every section should end with a, in summary, this is the bottom line of this section. Okay. And I, I sort of put that same comment in multiple yeah. places in the document. Okay. Um, anything else, Bill, that you want to review as part of your overall assessment? I uh, just some of the bullet points that I thought jumped out of the thing was um, the need for a town planner or economic development coordinator, and the need for looking at regulations that might be impeding business. That's really what they seem to focus on. Um, mm -hmm. So, but that's just, you know, I don't think we should tell them that those are bottom line points. That was just my expectation of what they will, will say. Yeah. Um, so the town planner, and then can you just repeat your second one? The second one was they had a whole long discussion at the end of regulatory yes. reform might improve the business environment. Yeah. And if, if, as I believe, they think that is the key to helping, then they should, I would expect to see those points made in the executive summary. Okay. Um. So, Todd, did you have any further comments, questions? I know towards the end they start talking about the water pieces a lot. Um, did you have anything? Not specific? yet. Other than other than like I just I just downloaded it on onto my Google Drive. Sorry, I'm late on that. It's but a lot of my of the graphs towards the end are messed up and i don't know if it's just from my download and the way it's opened in my thing i haven't um really been able to go through a lot of it yet um okay. but like on page 52 the i think it was 52 is it me or is that it has to do with um what is it doing oh retail space inventory vacancy rate that graph to me looks messed up, and I don't know if it's just me or. It looks fine. Three. All right, then it's me. Um, well, it's not you. It's probably whatever software you're using. Yes. Probably. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm... This, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff to digest here. That I mean, I don't. I, I'll, I'll be honest. It's a lot of this stuff isn't in my wheelhouse. Um, give me a second to look at the, the water stuff and I'll let you know what I think. Okay. Because um, when we were looking at it before, didn't they have comments about it? They didn't understand why we had, um, oh yeah, here it is. General observation. Um, relationship between the residential aquifer protection overlay district, the aquifer over, uh, protection overlay district and the groundwater protection district is not clear. Um, yes, and, and well, the, there's a difference between all three that have specific applications. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure why they pointed this out. Um, I know for a fact that I, I know of at least five or six other local communities that have all the same sort of setup. One is to protect residential private wells. Um, one is to protect the, um, the aquifer in general and the groundwater is specific to protecting the ground public groundwater wells. Um, we have all three of those needs in the community. So I don't know why they pointed that out. <clears throat> 
So you don't have to come with the statement right now, but um, it would be good to be able to give a definitive comment in that section um, for review. Because if they're saying it's not needed, maybe there's something that we can point them to, to say, you know, can you review this, you know, sort of refresh this section, um, anything of that nature. Um, and again, you can, you can think about it for a little bit through the meeting. Um, but I know that there's a lot of comments in that particular area, um, about the district. Okay. Um, because also like on number three, what they don't make mention of is they're talking about, uh, water resource protection districts, reduced density. Well, yes and no. It reduces density if you're on a private well, and there's a specific scientific reason for it. You want to spread out the demand over the over the area, and also you have septic systems. So if you're on a private well, you need space between the wells and the septic system so you don't get intrusion. So they don't they don't make that connection, which is confusing to me. Okay. Um, and just for, for folks generally that are looking at this, um, Todd's referencing areas on page 71. Um, there's a few things in that particular area that I had noted, um, you know, again, to the vagueness of the report that number one, under general observations, towns and zonings needs to be updated to conform with recent changes, but it doesn't say how or why. And then in the bullet two, above where Todd was just mentioning bullet three, or number number three, um, so two talks about the relationships between the three. They said that it's unusual for this to be happening. And that um, it talks about our three acre minimum lot requirement being rare. And I don't know that to be fact or not fact. And I know Chaz and Lori, uh, you were both on, on this call this evening. Um, I'd like to open the floor and ask you your opinion of that is in the best of your knowledge, a three acre minimum, um, which is, our, um, one of our districts, but the other one is two acres. Is that, um, uh, rare for a rural community or not? I don't know if it's rare for other communities, but um, I did read the um, whole report today. And I, in my wheelhouse, we've got the housing and, um, and businesses in town. And so, although I didn't read every word, my eyes were directed to what I was most interested in and what they had to say. Um, I found that they made a number of suggestions and they were within each um, area. I mean, specifically calling out the large amount of restrictions that we have on development, restrictions on businesses. They even called out the fact that was too restrictive in their opinion was on the renewal for the um, accessory apartments um, having to be done. Um, as per the federal government, we have a shortage in housing. And we also are seeing a lot of our small businesses go out of business. There is not local help or support in any of our bylaws that are helpful to a new business owner or even to someone who wants to develop here in town. Um, getting back to the three acre, because we have two acre zoning since um, 19, the late 1970s, um, before you know, they went from the half acre to the acre and then they went to two acre, um, a few years after that. Now the three acre comes into play when you have wetlands on the property. You have to have so many acres of, you have to have three acres if you're in wetlands and say you have a, a six acre parcel. Well, you're only gonna be able to get one lot 
because three of the acres have to go with a lot because you have wetlands on your property. And that probably goes into play with what Todd is saying about overlays and the protection of the wells and and where water it has to be a certain 100 feet away, your septic has to be 100 feet away from a well. Um, there are variances given sometimes for um, so between like a, a stream or a pond, again, Right. I think, Lori, you were talking more about some of the restrictions that are further down. One of the things that we have, we were noticing in the report is that there would be statements made and we're, we're trying to get them to give us more details on the statements. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of your comments um, might lend itself to other areas. Um, but I just wanted to, to check that particular fact in that section that Todd was speaking of. Okay. Um, that's the only, that's the only thing I know about three acre. Okay. Um, okay. So before we, I, I want to make sure that we give the other members a chance. Um, Andrea, I know uh, you had the opportunity to review it as well. What is your thoughts? Um, I I I like Bill's idea of ideas very much, but overall, when I read the thing, I had I felt it was vague as well, and I had felt they had not written um, a thing so much to cover Townsend's exact problems as much as these arcade or buzzwords to get grants. You know, they wrote this thing to enable us to get grants, not really to enable us to improve. Okay. Is there specific language that we should share with them based on your reading of it on ways that they could improve or enhance the report? Um, to support what we need in Townsend, like any anything jump out at you that we need to flag for them? No, not I can't think of anything specifically. I'm sorry, except of course what I wrote before is that I I would like to know um, the percentages with the population being what it is rather than what they anticipated it would be when they did their figures. The percentages for a town, I would assume, are different. Okay. So if I were to encapsulate that, Andrea, would it be safe that you want them to um, take take another look at the population figures that they're given to us, um, fact check those with the census? Well, the census hasn't been released yet, so... Okay, um, but we do we do a census every year, which will give her them the exact figure that we have. I mean, it can change from day to day. But it was eighty seven, right. eighty two. Tomorrow could be eighty three or eighty one. You know, but it gives you a a, a greater ballpark figure. You know, it gives you a greater instrument to accuracy. Some of the things that he, some of the things that, that Lori mentioned, I can see being very practical in a larger town. Maybe not here. Maybe because we're a small town and we, we are, well, we are, we're 100% septic systems. So we need to, we really need to protect the groundwater and, and, um, to make it more user friendly to do various things just with businesses and all just isn't there besides the fact that the greatest reason that um, small businesses fail is because of poor financing, not because of town rules. Well, we can agree to disagree. Uh, Laura, okay. Laura, yeah. remember this is, we, we do need to let the, the members of the master plan committee talk and have their meeting. Well, um, we are members, Kim. Everybody yeah. is a member here. We're ex officio members, which means that we have the ability to speak as well. We want to make sure that we 
kind of give people their say and um, let everyone have their floor for the their opinions. Um, so, so Andrea, if we're going to make a note, um, it would be to double check the how they're doing their population prediction and their percentages. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, Karen, um, did you have some specific language that you would like um, to uh, address or a particular area of the report? Well, you did a lot of reviewing, which was great. Uh, the only thing that I did notice at the end of the report, such as Andrea said, um, the prediction for Townsend has been a reduction in population, and the end of their report say there's an increase in population. Increase. So yeah. based on what the high school was built on, it was based on decreased population. So you can find online that there's information that the prediction is a lower, lower population, not a higher population, like they stated. That's the only thing that I would add. Okay. Let me just take a note on that. Madam Chair, may I speak on that, on that particular? Um, yes, go ahead, Chaz. Um, Karen, I do 100% agree with you as far as those, those figures are concerned. Um, the um, MRPC had given you a PowerPoint presentation in regards to the populations and their projections, and they're vastly different from what this report states than, than what uh, MRPC does. Uh, my suggestion would be to um, look at what MRPC did and put them in and have those both of those figures with uh, resubmitting with them to have them crunch those numbers a little more. Um, some of their percentages, as far as I see, are, are, are a little off. Um, their projections, especially of poverty level um, uh, population within town, I think is off. Um, if you look at a, a demographic breakdown on exactly what they're saying, what MRPC is saying is completely different. So uh, there is, there is, there needs to be congruency in that, in that respect. Um, also, with what I had saw with um, a lot of the um, workforce characteristics and the business characteristics, I think those also need to be looked at with the figures that were provided to the master plan from MRPC um, and seeing if they can put those two numbers together to get something a little more realistic. Yeah, so I think um, I think we're all in agreement on that particular one. And Chaz, I think you make a good point. We've been worried about the differing numbers and where MRPC is, you know, really focused on this region. I think it's important for them to use that. So I think this is a pretty substantive change. Um, what do we do if they won't change those numbers? Well, if we're not going to put the... Any thoughts? If we're not going to put the, the report in from start to finish as a thing, right? We can just submit it. Well, it affects so much in the report. Oh, yeah, you're true. That's true. Yeah. Well, I suppose we need to know where they found the figures that he actually that they actually posted to us. Um, there's okay. information there, so if we can find out where they actually brought that information from, that would probably help us. In the report, he he said that it was based on the ten year federal census. It is, yeah. Well, yeah, but that's not all. Um, uh, again, a lot of the information that MRPC had provided, um, they had different sources um, for census. It was partly with the, the U.S. Census, but um, there's also state numbers that they had put in there, too. Now, when MRPC does make quotes like that, they always put where their sources are, and I noticed that this didn't have that as well. So we would need to fact check. But, um, Madam Chair, may I ask just a, a general question, I guess, on this? Sure. Was 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 there like an MOU like specific? I, I'm I'm kind of looking at this right now at a at a twenty thousand foot level, um, and it sounds to me that um, 
you know, what you guys are looking for, for the information may not be what they're thinking that they need to provide to us. Is, is there any way that, um, you know, I, I, I don't think that they were to provide us something that we could just stick right into a, a master plan. I think they were providing us just the, the information and then we would have to then, you know, put that into the master plan. So I guess I, I just, I'm trying sure, to find... it's, it's sort of like, um, the survey Chaz that MRPC did the survey, the survey becomes an attachment or an addendum to the, the plan, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's information that informs the committee on what to pull. But I think the, the notion would be that any information that we provided would be part of the package, but that we wouldn't say this, this chapter is the economic development chapter and take their report and plunk it in there. Right. We would take the information and move it. The, the wary, uh, at least mine, and I won't speak for the whole committee is that if we can't articulate and understand where they got their numbers, how they got their numbers, how they're drawing these conclusions, it's really hard to put any of it in the plan. Right. And I think that's, you know, part of what Bill said and, and some of my notes um, are you, you start to read this report and it's very, um, very fluff. So for example, in there, it says, you know, we need an ice cream shop. Well, that might be illustrative of something that they're thinking, but that's not something we can move over into our plan. Mm -hmm. One, we have two. So how does that, how does that help yeah. us? And then they, they just, they talk a lot about, uh, you know, when I was asking you, you and Lori about the three acres, well, this is rare. Well, where do they know that from? How do they know that? Yeah. And, and that's what I'm in. And that's exactly what I, what I mean by when I'm saying where their focus is, because I mean, our town is completely different than, than a lot of other towns. I mean, I, in the planning board, we kind of look at, we narrowed down, I think it was eight communities that were somewhat sim similar to us as far as population and demographics and all of that kind of stuff. But even oh. other eight ones, they're completely different. Um, so it, I mean, the reason, yes, it is, it is possibly rare, but are the other communities that they're comparing us to have sewerage, for instance, we don't have sewerage. So we have to be careful of that. So that's right. one of the reasons why we have the three acre. Right. And that's, that was part of when we were reading it saying, well, some of this information is seems like it's boilerplate. And that was a term that we've used a couple times. Um, and that's why we want, that's why we really have taken the time to go through this, mm -hmm. to ask them the questions. Um, you know, there's several spots where something, where did you get this? What do you mean by this? Where's the backup to it? Mm -hmm. Um, in, in that, I feel that you, you should have that backup. You guys should be yeah. able to ask for it and they should include it in there. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't, I don't see why they, they shouldn't have. Um, but I also think with Bill, I agree with you 100%. This needs to be condensed. You know, this is, this is like a Charles Dickens novel in some respects. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't necessarily need to be like that. You know, we, we need this for our master plan. We don't need this for anything. You know, it's, we're not going up for a literary award for the town here. Right. And, okay. and, and I do understand from being on the other side as a consultant, sometimes you, the, the report and the data can be very detailed, but you always have a very sh short, um, sometimes not two pages short, but a couple of pages of these are the key points. This is the, this is the information. This is where you'll find it. This is the why and wherefores. Um, but this document, um, just just you go to read it you can't come to your own conclusions based on data that they provide um but before we get too far i don't want to leave um cynthia out of the conversation just any you know gut reactions thoughts cynthia of of things that y you um yeah i i mean what came to uh, mind. I found it overwhelming. can you hear me i can can you, oh, okay. I found it a little overwhelming, like, you know, 70 pages long. 
and uh, it didn't really give us any direction. I thought, uh, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really tell us what to do with the data. Okay. Good point, and I think that maybe is connected to what Bill said about a summary with each section. Would do you think that would help uh, Sin to? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the other, the other question I had for the group, they in in Chaz and, and Lori, you might have some thoughts on this as well. Um, but they they talk about Greater Boston, and I wondered if that's really the right look for Townsend. Should it be you know Middlesex County or Central Mass? Um, and let me give you a few examples of that. Um, so on page 38 of the electronic copy, um, it's just the upward recent trend line reflects strong real estate development throughout Greater Boston, which may or may not continue into the foreseeable future. And then it has Townsend and it has Middlesex, but should they be giving more information on the on us, or is that okay? Are you, you all comfortable with that? Because um, they reference it again on page 66 of the document that says, according to CoStar, the 62 multifamily units and three buildings within Townsend, numbers that have not changed since 2000. At 2.6, vacancy rates are about average for the greater Boston rental housing. Should we ask them to be saying, can you focus more on our area of housing or communities of our size? Or, or do you think Greater Boston is okay for us to be reflecting on with with this information? Madam Chair? I, yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tess. Uh, no, it was, that was Todd. Oh, um, Todd, sorry. <laughs> um, I think they do that because we're in Middlesex County. And Middlesex County includes great, a large part of Greater Boston. And are they going to be required? Since we are in Middlesex County, nobody knows why. Um, are they required to mention it as Greater Boston, or can we just tell them that that's not really our demographic of what we're in, in in the people that live here, and in not to reference Greater Boston, because I'm going to be honest, if we present something at town meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, and most of it, you know, like you said, is, is got Greater Boston in it or in a summary, they mentioned Greater Boston. I think I think the community in general is just going to tone us out. So I would agree to remove that part. But are they doing that because we're part of Middlesex County? I think um, that maybe they're doing it because we're part of Middlesex County, but also because there are so many towns there that they can find uh, many statistical comparisons to make. So it gives them a much broader palette than if they just compared us to, say, local, more rural towns. <sighs> But wouldn't we have more in common with those local rural towns than we do with, say, uh, Newton or, or some of the other community, you know, I, whatever community. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I, mean, I agree with you 100 percent. So I think I think maybe their focus on the data they're looking at, and that might be why the difference there is with the MRPC, Chaz, is because their MRPC is looking more like central mass area and, and comparing us there instead of as to Middlesex County. Um, I, I still for the life of me can't figure out why we're in Middlesex County, but anyways, um, I, I think that might be the disconnect between the one, the two reports and, and some of the terminology they're using. Madam Chair, may I say something to address yes, that? Yes, please. Um, on as as state rep to the housing authority, I can say that yes, it is because we are in Middlesex. Um, our numbers for our affordable housing are skewed just because the community of of uh, 
of uh, Cambridge is is within the Middlesex County area, and that skews a lot of numbers. It can be helpful and it could be hurtful. Um, as far as reports like this, it is helpful to have references to the greater Boston area because we are looking for a draw from that area as well. Um, okay. So it can be helpful, it can be hurtful. I understand exactly what you're saying because in, in town meetings, I have heard greater Boston and I'm like, well, what the hell, you know, we're nowhere near it. <laughs> but most importantly though, is that Unfortunately, we are in Middlesex County and a lot of our, our, our demographics, especially with housing and all of that kind of stuff, does um, have those, those areas involved in it. So we have to, we, I, you know, I agree with you. I don't like the verbiage of that, but it, but it is part of most of the reports that I see all the time coming out of the state. So do you think it would be helpful, um, you know, in this like feedback from all, all the members to ask them, to to footnote or explain why they're using greater boston so that when people read this they i mean they understand why it's in there and if we reference something from their report in our master plan that there's a definitive explanation for that yeah ask them to define what they mean by greater boston they might be able to come up with a better term okay it could, it could be community uh, middlesex communities or something like middlesex county communities or something like that Okay. Yeah, that might be better that I just, I just know if we, we were to try and pass something like this on, on the, the floor of town meeting and you say greater Boston, I understand what you're saying, Chaz, that we're trying to pull from that area. Um, but I do think that a lot of the residents in town will be, they'll, they'll tune out right, to a certain degree. No, um, I agree. Instead, of, instead of a footnote, just in the, the, the mainline verbiage, like in the beginning of their summary and stuff, you are included in Greater Boston's because you belong to Middlesex County. Don't hide it in a footnote. Um, yeah. I mean, this. I mean, this. Hit them, hit them over the head with it first time around, and and then, you know, then they won't have a question about it later. Okay. Can I ask a question? No. Just how much? Oh, you! Thank you. I'm sorry. That's all right. I should have expected it. <laughs> Go ahead, Andrea, please. Just how how important is the county or the various counties? I know we do have no longer have county roads. We no longer have the courthouses in there um, in the counties. It, it, why? Is the county such um, a key world when it 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 they're practically extinct? We still have county retirement, but that's about all as far as affecting the town one on one. I think Andrea, in this perspective, the the reference to county or regions focuses on data rather than services and and that's just my take on it that it's you know historical knowledge it's it's knowledge moving forward and that's where we can draw our data from so well, so I think, yeah. I think in that regard it's you know it's it's a region that we can refer to well yes and and I can understand that but then it shouldn't have this outstanding weight. We, um, uh, it's like saying we're comparing ourselves to people in Beverly because we like their lifestyle. Well, certainly we do, but we can't afford it. You know, it, it, it's a, if I don't understand, I guess, why the county plays any importance at all except for just a name for a place to gather materials from and I, th I think that is why andrea when the communities were selected um they did select more communities in our region not just reflective so they they drilled down a bit um okay. you know where they use uh Shirley and pepperell and ashby and fitchburg um, to sort of a, a mix of communities. Mm -hmm. 
I can't say that for a fact, but that that would be a thought that I had about it. Right. What county is, is? I'm sorry. Go on. That's how the state determines a lot of. And in Kim, I agree with you. It's the data, but that's how the state determines what funding and what's available for certain communities within the county is from from the raw data. That's why the census right. is important. That's why the, you know, if you look at at what they have in this report for the median income for towns, and I was kind of surprised to see how high that was. I don't know where those numbers came from. from. Yeah, I agree with that too. I was surprised as well. Right. Okay. Um, um, Karen, Bill, Cynthia, any any thoughts um, based on this last bit of conversation that we've been having? So my, my one thought is, you know, these charts, you know, they're interesting, but I don't see how they lead to any direct conclusions. And if you, you know, modify them to compare them to a different group, I'm not sure how that's going to change any of their executive summary. You know, unless these charts are key to their their bottom line, you know, I, 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 so let's keep them focused on what what really is their recommendations rather than changing data that may or may not affect the bottom line. Yeah. You know, I... I think that's good, Bill. Like, I don't think I don't think we can jump over and ask them to recalculate communities or any of that. We did agree to those communities, um, you know, based on their presentation, um, sort of midway during their project. But it's I definitely I'm glad we had that conversation about the Greater Boston. I think that will help readers in our community if they define it and, as Todd said, put it right in the body, uh, the language. Uh, so that it's not hidden in a footnote or anything like that, that people can understand why that reference. Um, I think people do, while we are on the fringe of Middlesex, um, you know, they know that that's where we are and where we kind of fit uh, data-wise. But Bill, I think to your point, we have all of these extensive charts that's just statement of fact. Um, so, so as I scroll through and look at the charts over and over again, it, it says the information on the chart, but not what to do with that information. So, would, so would I think it, that's an overarching, um, an overarching comment is that they have to explain the charts in relevance to action for the to take. Um, go ahead, Chaz. Um, I might suggest that instead of reinventing the wheel or, or picking apart what they submitted, um, I, I'm just throwing it out there because I'm that kind of a thinker. Um, I would say that what they submitted actually as a whole, it's it's actually a pretty good document, I think. Um, it's not really what we're looking for. So would it be more advantageous for us to ask for, like, would they be able to um, supply us with an addendum of a condensed version of their suggestions, exactly what Bill is asking for, as opposed to having them do a, a rewrite on this? Yeah, I think it's a mix of the, the two and some of the rewrite is more supporting documentation. Yep. Um, you know, it's like the market study identifies the types of retail for which there's evidence of unmet demand in Townsend and those retailers should be the focus of the efforts to attract new re retail to the community. What does that tell us? Right. It's the market study identifies these types of retail that have an unmet demand and you can find those in chart X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. you know, cause I think they have one about, um, the square footage that is in the, you know, 20 minute drive and then what's uh, sort of available to increase. That's not really the right way to say it. So if there's 10,000 square feet that the, the area can support and there's 65,000 square feet of that type of retail right now, well, there's growth area. Well, kind of tell us that in the beginning. It's right. So that's kind of the thing. To, 
Yeah, to stick it all yeah. in. Because my, my thing I'm taking from this is that they're throwing out suggestions on what we could do. If we had a town planner, the town planner would be the one to dig in deeper, you know, to, to, to really get more on a granular level on what they're looking at. I took it the same way with the zoning portion of it, too. I think the zoning laws, all of them need to be looked at. Same thing with planning. The, the planning board needs to look at a lot of the bylaws that are there. Um, but I, I think we just need something a little more condensed than, than what this is. It sounds to me that what that's what you guys are looking for. Yeah. So it's both, it's both a condensed summary, but more explanation. Like in there is a suggestion, they say a branding and wayfinding initiative. Where did that come from? That comes from market analysis. That's what, that's what they do. Right. But what I'm saying is it doesn't, it doesn't connect what they say in some areas doesn't connect to their data in the other areas, if that makes sense. Yep. Yep. No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, asking for an addendum is that it sounds like we're extending the contract and we have a lot more money. Right. Right. We do. That's a that's a good point, Bill. We we're not asking for an addendum. This was their draft that they submitted. We have the opportunity to reflect on the draft and, and ask for clarification. Which in in most cases, um, you know, that's what we're asking for. Like on page eight, when they talk about the advantages or disadvantages for the current zoning to provide businesses. So here in the front, they give three bullets. It, but then in the back, they go on to really talk about it, but they don't connect what they answer in number seven to any of the information that they put in the back of the report. So I think that's the big missing piece. And, and that's, Bill, what you were saying. What are the 10 big things? How do we do this? And then where, where did this information come from in the different reports? Madam Chair? Yes, Todd. Why, why can't we just ask, instead of an addendum, have an, an, an initial summary and condensed version of what we, you know, tell them that's what, mm -hmm. we, what we want, a condensed summary of, you know, four paid paragraphs of their summary, and then a condensed version of what their 10 biggest items and then attach a page number to where to go to look for the supporting data and in a more in-depth decision on what they're going what they want us to do so you can direct to the document so you don't have to read the whole bloody thing because there are going to be people that are their attention is going to be drawn to specific portions of it why don't we give them the driver to 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 find their attention niche and then where that is in the report in the beginning and that way you know to be honest with you people are going to get reading into this and get about eight pages in and close it and say i've had enough I, 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 that's my fear anyways right and and i think it will be folks like us that are on the committee and um on different boards in town that dive into this a little bit more um, but I think it, it does have to be supported with, with facts and details. Mm -hmm. Um, it does have to have summary as to why this stuff is in there. Um, cause otherwise some of it, you know, well, I've read this report several times and it's like, okay, how would I even use this charter information in our master plan itself? Like where are the salient points to share forward? Um, and so I think with the, the comments that we have provided in the document, the ones that we've created tonight, that should really give them some good guidance on the edits required to make this useful because there, there is data in there that could be useful um, if, if it's presented right um, and summarized in a way that is useful for us. So. Okay. Especially if we're writing grants, it has to be specific and we have to be able to quote exactly where it came from. So if we're writing a grant, it can't be vague. It has to be specific. Right. Yeah. Is, is that what happened with the um, MVP grant, Chess? Partly, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And Jim, and Jim. I, and Sorry, I think we, uh, oh, hang on. I was what I was going to say. Is, and I think for the long haul, we need to know how to replicate these in the future, if you will, like to make sure that each one of the charts is footnoted as to where they received the data. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you had another comment. Yeah, and it went right out of my head. Um, okay. If I think of it again, I'll bring you back. Okay. I, That's usually I, why I speak out, because if I hold on to it, then I should forget it. Um, no worries. Keep, keep thinking, Todd. I'll, I'll just, um, Kim, this is Don. I, uh, yeah, hey, Don. Hi. Um, sorry, I missed the last one. I was I was on furlough and couldn't get to email. <laughs> so, <laughs> no worries. Um, Don, can you just give us a little perspective on what time you joined? I'm sorry. It was um, probably a little late. I, I was trying to, um, 717, maybe. Okay. So, so we opened yeah. right at 720. So, so I'll just say jo joined after official okay. opening. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it, okay. it gets to a lot of the discussion of where you're at. I had questions about um, some of the charts that had listed the poverty levels and, and people in those and, and pricing. Um, but probably more specifically on page 62, if you go read the chart, when they were preparing these, it looks like this was prepared for Hanson, not Townsend. Wow, did I miss that? <laughs> I've read these things and wow. Would you well, say page sixty-two? Page sixty-two, the chart on page sixty-two about changes in households, twenty nineteen to twenty twenty-four. It says the change in the number of yep. households by age and income of Hanson Market. He is correct. <laughs> Nice find, Don. <laughs> but, but that's the sort of thing yes. on that we've all been asking for and try to tie it together. They, right. I, I do it. I cut and paste. I use data and charts and all that. So it, it's yep. gonna, so that's really what we're asking for. But this is this is the you know one. Is it Townsend data? And they just didn't change the label on the chart. Right. Or is it Hanson data, and we need to update. Right. Well done, sir. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So the, I really appreciate that. You know, I've I've looked at so much of it, and I didn't see that one, and the the rest of our committee didn't either. Um, but we did say a few times that it felt like cut and paste, and mm -hmm. obviously, you know, if we prefer a chart style, we we use them over. So I understand a mistake can be made, but we definitely want to make sure that that is corrected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that I, and yeah, research I, to make sure that it's not just the the not just um, the name that's incorrect. We want to make sure that the data is correct for our community. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, and I wondered if anybody else had noticed the the tax rate chart is in two different places. It's on page 14 and again on page 68. And I didn't know if it, there should just be a reference or if it's, you know, no no problem just having the same chart twice um, in different places. Madam Chair? Yes. On, I kind of, you mentioned it earlier, but on page five, I would rather, instead of like mentioning a specific shop like they did with the ice cream shop, just take or other, everything from ice cream shop or other out and just leave it specialty food shop and in, or artisan or whatever you want to call it. But like you said, we already have two in town, so I don't understand why that seemed to pop out. Yeah. And I think our initial question with that is like, did this come from somewhere else? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I look at that and I read it and, and it's sort of to me, the Westford and, and Kimball's kind of thing. They were trying to specifically mention something that we have similar near the area, but not specifically. Um, but Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of like it could be more generic. It, it, I mean, I, I read the first statement and it's about coming up with a unique experience and, you know, an ice cream shop that has destination with mini golf or, or bumper boats or any of all that other. 
Well, that's what we're inferring, but we'll, yeah. but they don't say those kind of things. Right. Right. We're reading into that. And yeah, the, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like this, this, it's everybody's, it, it's left open to everybody's individual interpretation of the statement of how they put it and how they'd implement it. Yeah. So you just look back at 14, the fiscal comparisons on the tax rate. Mm -hmm. And so in some spots they talk about, so this is two, two thoughts here. This is one of their yep. tables that they didn't have labeled. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they reference the labels and sometimes they don't. Right. Does anyone feel like they kind of rushed this or wasn't as attention to detail as should have been maybe? When did you get this draft? It does say draft. It, it, excuse me, can I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Lord. So it sounds like the, the way you're talking about how they wrote it, that you wanted them to tell you what to do and rather than just giving you statistics and then looking at which they do do on the last two pages i mean they definitely have read the bylaws the zoning they they've read how we permit so and, and they do give suggestions and they tell you that you're out of date this is out of date this is not how it's done and um but then I didn't pay much attention to the graphs because they're always outdated no matter what report you're getting. And this is dated as a draft December of 2019. Here we yes. are in November of 2020. And has there been any dialogue with them as to what you weren't getting from them? Cause so, so Laura, let's, um, let's step back. I want to, uh, comments on something that you said the back end of the report when it comes to the bylaws you are correct is very specific um i believe judy barrett wrote that section she was a member of the team um she's very well versed in that area while we do have some questions about it that's very detailed so that that's one that was one question of the questions that they had to answer so that's where there's a little bit of disconnect that 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 has some some concrete suggestions. It points to things. It talks about um, you know other communities whether it's worded um, in a way that is perfect or not. That's debatable. But yes, they did do that. The other part um, that is is less detailed are some of the other questions that we had asked them so that's where i think many of our questions come to play and why we're trying to get more information so as to the timing it was submitted the end of last year we met on it in the beginning of the year um, we had a PDF copy. Our initial inclination was um, disappointment. At, at, you know, in general, um, people were not happy with the report. We talked it through. Um, you know, I think I think Andrea was like, let's just reject the whole thing. And we were all like, yeah, let's do that. And then we're like, wait, wait. And I think Bill kind of talked us off the ledge and said, well, let's see what we can do in terms of, you know, going through it, reviewing it and giving them some good examples on how they might improve the draft to bring it to its final fruition. So then they sent um, the document in word so that we could do some track changes for them that brought us to march i was actually on vacation editing not editing commenting on the report when i came home Lori, um that's when everything got shut down so there wasn't a meeting opportunity then as you know there was questions about our status then we were starting to meet again and zoom gate ha happened so we just were able to have our last meeting a few weeks ago 
so through Adam Costa, we have, uh, we sat down with Chaz and Lance um, and Karen and I, and Adam has spoken to the vendor to let them know our status and what we're working on. Okay, I knew I knew most of that. I guess my question was, when the when it was sent to you as a draft, did did they offer to sit with you, like to go over with you? Did they do a cover email saying um, no? Okay, so that was a question I had because I think I would have asked for a meeting with them because you seem to have so many questions about it, uh, rightly so. Um, that that's just too bad that that couldn't happen. But I'd like to say something else about the branding. Um, you know, everybody reads things differently. And um, so when I immediately when I read that, I understood where they were coming from, because like Chaz said, they do marketing analysis. And basically part of what we need to do as a town is sell the town to others who want to come here, whether it is just for business or an attraction or the historic. And when when I read the branding thing, I thought, well, OK, they're not telling us how to do it they're t or what to do, but they're giving it as, us an example of what to do. So branding in Townsend would be like, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about Townsend? For me, it's antiques. There's people that come from all over the world, all over the world to two antique shops in town. They don't know anything else about Townsend, but that it has antiques. We also have a lot of historic homes here. So there are opportunities. It has to come from the town though. You know, and he's right. You need to have a town planner. You need to have staff that can do these things. And other towns like Southboro, that is about the size of us in population, but much smaller in density, has so much to offer. So there, there are ways of doing things. So we just need to have the vehicle to do it. I think if we really, you know, look at the document, you're going to see a lot of things that are going to jump out at you that the town could, should, can do. Um, there was another part that jumped out at me. If you're talking about water protection is the um, stormwater protection in how our bylaws are so far behind on the parking spaces and the size of the spaces, which are detrimental to stormwater protection. It says it right in there. So I don't, it's, it's not a total waste. Um, no, in that, uh, Lori, we're not saying it's a total waste and you're, uh, you are definitely referencing the area of strength in the document. Um, like you said, Judy, I think did a really good job with that and she makes some really good points. But again, that was just on, on one part of what the whole report was supposed to be. So we're definitely not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We just want to make sure that those other areas are supported with facts and with details. And I think, you know, <clears throat> for all of us, we're more familiar than most folks in town on our bylaws the section that you're referencing right now on the stormwater, that whole um, write up, we can go to our own bylaws and look that up. I think our questions are some of the other information that they're using that we don't know where it came from. Um, some we do, but some we don't. And some we, some we just don't know the relevance of why it's plunked in there. So that, that back end, while there's a few questions and clarifications, it's not as much as the front end of the report. Does that make some sense? I guess I just didn't know when, when I was reading the report and I, and I did get the 74 pages today was um, I, what your questions were. Maybe I knew them at one point a year ago or a year and a half ago or two, Yeah. but I don't know what they are now. So I don't have them to compare to what the product is that we're looking at. Okay, so the the questions that we asked are summarized in very, very vague comments on pages four, five, 
six and I think it might go as far as page eight and nine. Um, but that's it. So, so there's five pages on the questions that we asked and then there's 70 other pages. So the one question that we asked is in the back end um, and, and detailed very well for the zoning piece. So our question eight was, are there zoning changes required that would promote businesses while maintaining the rural nature of the town? And that's where they did a wonderful kind of analysis. They did a lot of uh, research for that particular one, but the other ones, not so much. Um, some of our questions, Lori, we just answered with three bullets. So that's where there's, there's that variance in their own report. And so it's not to dismiss what they've pointed out and they're uh, correct. And I think from an environmental standpoint, there's much more that we can be doing with parking that's not even listed here, but that's, that's for the future, right? Is they can't give us every detail on how to improve that, but they did address that. It's the other things that they didn't address as much and the other data points that, you know, like you said, they're incongruent with other data that we have. We have to have that fixed. Yeah, you need to ask them. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yes, Todd. Um, in reference to some of what um, Laurie was referencing, um, my major disappointment was when we sat down and we went over uh, the different proposals and they were there when we were telling them um, they were chosen. We were pretty specific about what we were looking for in this report and, you know, the direction that we wanted it summarized. We wanted specific action, things like that. And I don't feel that's what we got. And I think that was my main frustration when we got that huge PDF um, in the Word document was it, it didn't meet what we told them we wanted. And um, I guess that was my main frustration with it. Laurie, we were really specific about what we were looking for, why we chose them. They, in their examples, they had um, um, uh, rural village economies um, uh, for like um, out, in like Western Hathier, Mass. Watley, or yes. someplace, right, Sean? Out by, out by, out by um, there was one that they did that was out by Tanglewood, and I forget the name of the town, but it was specific to draw off of that and develop a small village type um, uh, retail economy. Almost, we mentioned, I think I might have mentioned sort of like North Conway Village is like you drive through, you've got a main road, rural road, two, ro two lane highway, but you're able to develop it that way. And they seem to get it. And I, when we got the report, it, it did not even come close to meeting my expectations of what we thought we explained to them in the beginning. Right. And one of the things there was, there were three team members that were presented, Judy, Frank, and I'm forgetting the other woman who worked on many of the things that Todd just referenced. Um, so I think that sort of is a missing piece too, is that the influence of that person's experience seems to be lacking with, with our report, um, which I know, you know, things change within, within organizations and they might not have access to the same talent um, when things begin and when they end. I understand that. But Todd, you're, you're spot on about sort of those, those missing elements. Um, for sure. And I think, you know, Frank is more the, the data person, but just didn't connect those data. So I think it's, I think it's salvageable. Uh, it's definitely a long time coming. I think we went over a lot of really good points um, that, that they can capture what they can improve on. Um, and I just want to make sure that my, my letter to them that I draft is covering all of it. Um, so we have all the, the comments themselves. Um, so we're looking for an executive summary um, that will highlight uh, the, the top 10, um, and I can, can say range, um, you know, of, of initiatives, or I can say 10 specifically, um, if that's what you think we should do. 
and then um, that we just Matter want them to reevaluate. Oh, go ahead, Todd. On one thing before I lose lose track yeah. of it or whatever, but in in their idea of branding, they didn't give us an idea or a direction of how to brand our town. What I think that was one of the things we talked about and what we were looking for is not just uh, cookie cutter, ice cream shops, uh, artisan food, restaurant to table type stuff, but give us a brand or an idea that we can then go after people for, or if we brought in an economic developer, they had they had an idea of what, what branding or, or what sort of economy would work for us. And I, I don't think we got that. Right. And we uh, did, when we, when we met with them in person, I mean, Don and I spent a lot of time with them, um, driving around, showing them different areas of the town. I mean, we went, how many, I can't even remember Don, how many hours we drove around together. Oh. Mm. But I feel like it was like a half a day. Yep. Because we, I mean, we covered every inch of the community and showed them, you know, high spots, low spots, where the wells were, um, Squanacook, the harbor, the youth um, recreation fields, um, historic homes, um, where our businesses were, the different villages. Like we really spent a lot of time there, and it's interesting they didn't they didn't even mention the differences, you know, of, um, you know, our villages are really different from one another. And when you talk about branding, they didn't mention anything for the, um, for the, um, the, the Harbor, you know, historic, um, entities. So, or even the center, even some suggestions on, on, Right. Redirecting traffic so you could develop some sort of retail in and around that area. And and I thought we I I remember that oh, conversation. Mr. Birkin was gonna of, love you, Todd. But no, I, but I'm I'm but I'm serious. I mean that was one of the things we discussed with them about having a central village walking retail type idea, or even if it wasn't there at some point along that developing that in in Laurie's point about the, the antique shops were were spot on we we mentioned those and that could we use those as a foundation and build other things off of them um i, I think we mentioned like artisan things like uh blacksmithing knifing knife making uh glass blowing developing that sort of rural um niche type stuff and i i don't see that in this report i'm, I'm sorry right. i just don't you, you, you're right, Todd. The, the things that we did discuss with them in person um, aren't reflected in here. And you just, you know, I remember very vividly talking to them about the Delaney's when we were on the tour and telling them, you know, I talked about John being on the um, Antique Roadshow and um, things of that nature. So I can make a note to try to include some of the um, feedback that they received um, during that listening session. And I know even while they did a good job on the, um, the bylaws themselves, I know Richie Hanks had talked to them extensively. He spent, he couldn't make it to the regular day session. So he, had a separate session that was like about two and a half hours just talking about the permitting process and different permitting tools and things like that. So I'll ask them to bring forward some of the feedback um, and put it in those appropriate places. Okay. Jim? Yes, Andrea? I was just thinking, one of the reasons, maybe, that they left it in certain spaces fairly vague is to give us wiggle room, like um, Lori talked about antique dealers. Well, the bottom is out of antiques. It, it's, it's, it was very nice. It was really wonderful for a while. But today's younger people don't want that old stuff. They want all new stuff. And so 
it isn't a place to to develop us to go to where if if we could make a combined oh you could do a little antique shopping and you could have an ice cream and you could do a whatever um to keep it back to go since it's not enforceable well, you can't make the zoning board of appeals suddenly we do redo the bylaws or the um the um uh uh, coordinator, land use coordinator, suddenly become a property developer. Um, they gave us ways we could kind of fudge the thing and and maybe put it together to go ahead. And if that's the case, they should let us know where and how they did that. Why they think that would get us to move ahead. Right. Uh, to, to that point, Andrea, I thought that they would have taken the survey information that we gave them and combined that with the interview information and, and kind of put some of that information in there. But, you, you know, we can certainly pull forward some of our survey information um, if they can improve on those other global areas. I think we should be in good shape. Um, so we we have to oh, go ahead, Andrea. I, I love Thompson. I've been very, very happy here. Extremely happy. I would never want to. I've never wanted to live anywhere else. But the reason I like Thompson is because it's nothing. It's got beautiful waters I can go on or not go on. I don't run into tons of people. I can see a little crowd on Thursday nights if I want. Run into old friends and talk. I can be involved in my government. I can um, do any number of things. Instead of making, trying to make Townsend a dynamic place, I think we should make it, this is just the comfortablest place in the world. Okay, slip off your shoes, put on your bedroom slippers, and walk around. Nobody will say anything that you've got those on. <laughs> point, point uh, Chairman, to, to Andrew's point on that, I, to a point, agree with you. However, it makes the town financially unsustainable. You, ha you have services that you need to deliver. The prices for those services aren't going down. Um, and what no, is they are, but what is and let me finish. Let me finish, yes. please. I know. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm yes, sorry. Andrea, Todd, Todd has the floor. Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, I apologize. Um, um, I, I think that you know, we worry about the tax rates and stuff like that. The only way I know to stabilize that and reduce the impact on the individual resident is to develop some sort of local economy so that you have a different tax revenue. How many people, how many times have we heard at town meeting, I can't afford to live here, you know, the people in your circumstances, Andrea, that you know that 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 you know they they can't afford to live there. Their children, that have you know families that have been here for for a couple of generations or, or more, their kids are moving away because they can't afford the taxes or or what have you. Um, we can disagree on that part of it, but the only way I know to make a community financially stable is to diversify the revenue that comes into that town. Um, a big part of it too is. The kids, um, you don't have things for them to do or employment for them to do readily available. Um, it was a, a big conflict for us when my kids were growing up. So I, I get what you're saying. I love the rural sleepiness of our, our neighbor, our, our communities, uh, of our community. Um, yeah, I raised my kids here. I love the town. I wouldn't fight as hard for certain things in this town as I do. God wish my, my wife wishes I wouldn't. <laughs> um, but I think that if we really want to find that stable part, we've got to do something to develop a better local economy. Otherwise, we're just going to, um, I mean, look what's happened to Ashby. Their, their tax rate is even higher than ours. And it has a lot to do with their in, you know, inability to capitalize on what they have and develop some sort of, of localized economy. And that's about all I got to say. Thanks, Todd. Um, 
Go ahead, Andrea, I, for one final one, and then I do want to review the list. I, I agree with what I was trying to say was that I agree with Todd in the sense that I'd like to encourage comfortable things, you know, for for people to make it a destination they could come to. Come and go fishing with a beautiful top street. Come and, you know, that rather than um, trying to sell it as a, uh, a dynamic place. Yes, the taxes are high and they've out, outpaced some people. When we bought the house here, we bought it because it was a, the tax rate was the cheapest around and the house prices were the cheapest. Um, water at the time we bought our house was five dollars every six months. Um, yeah. but, for the base but the charge. regulation. But, but I'm talking this time. Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> um, the thing is that hiring property managers and everything aren't going to end the problems. We can, that's going to raise your taxes more when you consider when you hire one person just starting out. You spent besides their salary and everything else, twenty two thousand dollars on health care. We have to find an answer. Remember, no matter what this says and no matter what we put forth, this is to get us grants to do some of this business. This is not enforceable you can't say oh gee we wonderful idea zoning board get busy change all your things planning board take this direction this is what we want stop directing us to where you're going now no they're not going to do it they don't have to do it and they shouldn't be forced to do it, it it's not remember it's a it's a kind of it's it's a very practical lovely little thing to have but to some degree it 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 offers us an opportunity to maybe get a chance to do something, but does not force or cause any legal binding to anyone at all. So okay. we can write this and make it perfect, put it out, and things are just the same as they've always been, and will stay the way they've always been. <laughs> then why then why then why are we beating our heads over this? Hang this on. Is supposed to give Hang us, on. Is supposed to give direction. Hang on, Todd. On how- Todd, mm-hmm. Andrea. I said Madam yep. Chair first. Yes, yeah, hang on. Hang on. Let me just interject. So this is great and wonderful conversation. I want to make sure that we stay focused tonight on what we need to get over to FXM. Right. I'm sorry. So I just want to, I want to scoot back to the list um, of, of what we want from them. So we want them to address the report with a overarching executive summary with the key points of what we need to do. We want them to revisit a few of the key things related to water and the three different um, aquifer uh, overlay districts that we have in the recharge area Um we want to make sure that they double check the population and the percentages and footnote the information. We'll give them the MRPC uh, report. We will make sure that they tell us where all of their numbers came from so that this can be replicated in the future. Um, we want to make sure that they are checking all their tables and charts, making sure that it's Uh, Townsend data with a specific reference to the uh, page 62 chart. Um, We want to ask about the duplication of some of the information with the tax rate. Um, Make sure that they um, loop in some of the feedback from our listening session to the overall report. So all of that with all of our specific comments, did I miss any key bit of information? What about uh, Madam Chair? Yes, Todd. Um, what about the the idea on a, a, a better defining of the branding? I found that that was one of the things we talked about explicitly yes. when, when we started. And, and that, that one, Todd, does that one does have a specific comment on it? Okay. Yeah. Then I'm done. 
Okay. Um, and, and I love our conversations. Um, I, th I think we've, you know, created a lot of interesting thoughts and that I think that we're getting them captured in the overall plan, whether it be from the survey or, or our input. So the conversations are not lost on me. I just want to make sure that we get everything back to FXM no, on this particular report. Can't go down way too many rabbit holes, so keep me out of as many as you can. Yeah. We, we all can uh, fall to that. Um, so not a problem. So if we're good with that, I'd like to write up that letter um, to them. Um, if I can ask one person from the committee to read over it for typos and things of that nature before I actually officially send it, um, I believe we can do that without being in violation of open meeting. We're not making a decision. We're just making corrections. Um, anyone want to volunteer for that second set of eyes? I certainly can if you want, Kim. Awesome. Thank you, Bill. I would, but I, I don't know if I am good at the double proof. proofreading. <laughs> All right. You, you and I, well, me specifically, I, I should be in the poster, children, um, for the need for internet in the internet desert of Massachusetts, because I just keep getting my unstable internet. I mean, Mass, uh, not Massachusetts, right here in Townsend. I'm part of that little group that has no cable. I thought so I was getting close to fixing yeah. that. I have half of my notes say lost connections for a few seconds, lost connection because we're <laughs> out in Mason and I'm like, oh my gosh, but we're getting high speed on December 1st. Wow. But I thought, I thought you guys, I thought they had, they had come to an agreement and they were starting to put poles in and run line. We'll see. Yeah, it is. Oh, oh, you? Oh, okay. Out this way, yes. Yeah, we'll have to see because I've been without it for forever. But that's okay. Um, we can fill in um, notes if if you missed anything, Cynthia. But thanks for taking them. And um, so with with that. Um, I want to make sure that we've captured everything. I don't want to go down the rabbit holes, but if there was something pressing that we did miss, um, let me know. Otherwise that's what will go in the letter. Bill will review that letter. I'll get it off to them. And we still want them to have it returned to us um, so that we can review it on the 21st of December at our meeting. So the ask would be to have it back on like December, 17th that would give them one two and a half weeks is that is that good it's okay by me mm. sooner the better okay okay um so then other sections and updates um so we had talked about last time not that the planning board has the survey. They now have this report. Beth has had this report. Um, anything else at this point to go over to planning board? Okay. The assignments of work to be completed. Karen and uh, Todd, do you want to just update everyone on what has transpired since the last time that we talked? Uh, sure. Um, Karen did type up a draft for me to kind of go through and edit. Um, I got to thank her for that. I did write up and change uh, a decent amount of it. Um, and a lot of the stuff is going to be what I'm special, spe what I specialize in. Um, a lot of it had to do with the Water Management Act, um, the certain changes in it and what it means for us specifically if we try to develop or increase anything. Um, um, but as far as uh, as far as that final draft that I put together, I, I think it's good to go as is. Um, okay. I, well, so so right now um, we have that on the docket for the eighth to discuss the missing section. So yours was one. So if you're good with what you have right now, 
um, for that to be sent to everyone. That's great. If there's anything that you think of, obviously you can add it, but I can with you and Karen now yet. Yes. Go ahead and send that to the other members for review. You guys are good. Okay. I'm good. How about you, Karen? Okay. So I can send that over um, right at the end of the meeting. If everyone could, in preparation for the next meeting, really read that. Um, I, I've told Todd there's so much in his head about water. I do learn something new from him um, in most of our conversations. So if you can think back of the things that Todd has talked about, if you didn't see it in there, this would be our opportunity to ask him additional questions on the 8th um, and you know, add or um, modify that particular document. So that will give everyone a couple of weeks to take a look at that. Um, Bill, I know we had some emails with Veronica. Um, we were just asking for information from her. I know she wanted like a template. I tried to let her know that she doesn't have to worry about the template, that we just need the information. Um, because it's every time I get something from, you know, somebody to create one of these types of reports, not speaking specific on this one, but when it's time to put that final report together, anytime anyone gives me something, I'm stripping away any of the, um, formatting that they've done in order to combine all the documents together. So I don't know if she sent you that or if you still have to interview her or if you want to give me a little update there. And the last email I saw was the one going back and forth about sending her, you know, a template and you said you didn't need it and we sort of didn't get a reply. Um, my thought is let's just send her some sample section that just says, here's a different section we've done. And, and, you know, because let's, let's, I think that would okay. uh, climb the pump and, and get it back from her. So if, what, okay. So that that's, I guess that, I guess what I'm confused about Bill is that she had the example sections from what Karen and Cynthia done had on recreation. Well, let's just, let's just send it to her again then. Okay. Um, do you want me to, why don't I do it? Yeah, if you could do that, but this, I think the way that I interpret it is that she was looking for some template to put it in and there is no template to put it in. Everyone is just writing down their information and putting it forward. So if you want to resend her that one, I mean, she had access to all of them. So that would right. be fine to resend her that. Do I have a copy of that or do you want to send me another copy or is it um, the sections? I believe you have it, but I can send it to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. And then if, if we do have that in time, maybe we can review that on the 8th as well. Um, okay. okay. Um, we had talked about gaps last time. I just leave this as a standing um, you know, item on there in case of anything that you've thought of, anything that you've seen. So anything, any comments about gaps or that particular topic right now? Nope. Okay. Nope. Um, so the calendar and deadlines, we do have the 8th and the 21st. Do you want to plan our, a January meeting or do you want to wait until the 8th to do that? I'd rather wait. Let's see how things progress um, after Thanksgiving and see okay. where the world seems to be at that point in time. Um, trying to project anything out too far. I think we can get in trouble with it. Okay. Is everyone good with that? Yes. Good, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so anything um, on anyone's mind that we didn't cover relative to our agenda this evening that you burning last thoughts? Kim? Yes, Andrea. How, how, how much money do we still owe that company? Off the top of my head, I think it's a, like, 
it was a third, a third, and a third, so like seven thousand. It's not very much money. A third and a third. Oh no, no, I just was. I the wonder if 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 they would be expedient to do it if they were waiting for more money. That way, it was it was just a. I was just trying to round out a thought in my mind. I'm sorry. Okay. No. No worries. All right. Um, so if if nothing um, else is on anyone's mind for this evening, I really appreciate mind. everyone's feedback. Bill, uh, I move that we adjourn at eight fifty nine with one minute before my deadline. <laughs> yeah, mine too. I got I got a nine deadline too. <laughs> a second. Was that Chaz, you seconding that? No, that was Don. Oh, that was Don. Okay. Sorry. You guys sound a lot alike. You guys sound alike, yes. It's the, yeah. it's the neighborhood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I'm Bill at 8.59. All right, everyone. Well, have a really wonderful Thanksgiving. I um, hope that you're um, able to enjoy the time and hopefully a, a long weekend will do us all good. Um, recalibrate us and look forward to, to getting through the the month after that and on to 2021. So thanks. Thanks for joining us, Lori and Chaz. And um, happy people. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Hartley. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Hartley. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Hartley. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Hartley.